Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Come Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing a requested case of the unsolved disappearance of Kyron Horman. Researching this case was pretty tricky and I found it to be extremely frustrating. It just blows my mind that this child literally vanished in a place full of people. All I could see was that those who loved Kyron don't really have many leads or clues as to where he could be and are really counting on theories. Now I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Kyron Horman was born on September 9th, 2002 in Portland, Oregon to parents Desiree Young and Kane Horman. Now, Kyron, he grew up with Desiree and Kane being divorced. His parents divorced when she, when his mother was actually pregnant with Kyron. But they were granted shared custody. But from what I've gathered, Kane was the one that Kyron would stay with the most while he would go ahead and be with his mother on weekends. Kane would marry his longtime girlfriend, Terry Moulton, when Kyron was four. Then after the marriage, Kyron would have a little sister named Kiera. Desiree would also have a new spouse by the name of Tony. Now, Kyron was described as a boy who was timid, he loved music, he loved school, he was a fan of cars, he was known to be nice, sweet, always smiling, and playful. On June 4th of 2010, Kyron is seven years old at this point in the second grade and that day he was having a school science fair at Skyline Elementary School. Kyron's mom wasn't able to make it since she did live like a few hours away so his stepmother Terry was with him and you know went to the school to help him set up his science fair exhibit. She took a photo of his little science fair exhibit then stated that she left the school. And of course, you know, she had to leave because classes were about to go ahead and start that morning. And from what Terry has said, Kyron told her that he would be walking towards his classroom. And according to Terry, she saw him walk away and he was never seen again. Later on in the day after Terry was driving around to different stores and to the gym, she states how when her and Kane went to the bus stop to pick up Kyron, he wasn't seen getting off of the school bus. She stated how she and Kane called the school and they found out that the teacher didn't see Kyron marking him absent, assuming that he had a doctor's appointment. After hearing that Kyron wasn't seen in class when he was supposed to be, Taryn, who claimed that she never got a call to state that Kyron was marked absent, called the police to report him missing. Of course, Kyron's mother Desiree is notified and she is just in shock and frantic to hear that her son is nowhere to be found. Like Desiree is here trying to go ahead and figure out how Kyron could be at school one moment then go missing the next. Since the police figured out that Kyron was missing for hours before he was reported missing, they searched for him right away, interviewing teachers, school staff, and students. A couple of weeks later, the cops would end the search and classify Kyron's case as a criminal investigation, believing that Kyron was kidnapped, but also believing that he was kidnapped by someone he knew. Which would make sense because like I mentioned before, Kyron was known to be a shy kid and wouldn't leave school on his own or with a stranger, especially when he had issues with his vision. Since investigators were certain that Kyron was taken by someone he knew, the investigators had their eyes on his stepmother, Terry. From what the police gather about Terry, Terry is looking sketchy. They find out that there were witnesses who were even friends with Kyron, who stated that Terry not only left the school, 
but that she left with Chiron. Of course, this made Chiron's mother Desiree suspicious. And the thing about Desiree, she expressed how six to seven months before Chiron vanished, she was really trying to go ahead and get custody of Chiron, especially since he expressed desire to live with her. But with the whole custody thing, Kane also stated how, you know, Chiron was just saying he wanted to stay with this parent or that parent just because in Kane's eyes, like, Chiron was not really adjusting well to the, you know, visiting this one parent one day and visiting the other parent the other day. Even though Chiron was, you know, grew up with that sort of schedule all of his life. But just to make it clear, like Desiree did not suspect Kane of doing anything to Kyron, but she was beginning to believe that Terry knew more than what she was saying. A landscaper for Kane and Terry would also come out and state how Terry offered him a lot of money to make Kane quote unquote disappear. When the police got word of this, they encouraged Kane to leave the house with his and Terry's one year old daughter, Kiera. So the police attempted to see if they could get Terry to admit to this alleged hit on Kane. So the landscaper would show up at the house to demand Terry for money while the cops were watching at a distance, doing their best to remain undetected. Unfortunately for the police and the landscaper, things did not go their way. Instead, Terry called 911 to tell them how someone was demanding from her $10,000. Terry would also take two polygraph tests, but failed, then walked out of the third one because, you know, she was frustrated. But Terry was adamant that even though she failed the polygraph test, that, you know, she was telling the truth. The police also focused on a friend of Terry's named Dee Dee Speicher. The police asked Dee Dee if she knew anything about Kyron's disappearance. But Dee Dee stated how she didn't know anything and was certain that Terry had nothing to do with it either. Like I mentioned before, Dee Dee was growing suspicious of Terry. And of course, you know, after hearing that his own wife was allegedly trying to go ahead and take his life, Kane was growing suspicious of her as well, which is why he no longer wanted to be her husband, filing for divorce. Terry would not only get a file of divorce, but she would also get a file of a lawsuit from Desiree. This lawsuit happened two years after Kyron vanished and Desiree really made this lawsuit in hopes that it could really prove that Terry had something to do with her son going missing. But Desiree would drop the lawsuit later on because in her, you know, the reason that she gave was that she didn't want it to interfere with the investigation. I'm going to go ahead and backtrack a little bit. Now you might be wondering like why on earth would Terry all of a sudden want to allegedly take her husband's life? According to Kane, the bad blood between he and Terry really started when she was experiencing postpartum depression after giving birth to their daughter and he was stating how Terry was acting different. He stated how she was becoming an alcoholic and because of her issues with the bottle, she was becoming irrational. But the thing about it is that she had issues with alcohol before she gave birth to their daughter because Five years before Kyron went missing, she actually was arrested for DUI. And the thing about it was that she was also charged with endangerment of a child. And, you know, Terry had an older son, not with Kane, but an older son in a previous relationship. And her son was in the car with her while she was intoxicated. Like I mentioned, Terry has an older son. He is a teenager by 2010. I believe that he was like 15 and People who knew Terry 
stated how angry she was with Kane for making him get out of the house. Now, I don't know why Kane wanted this 15-year-old out of his house because, you know, it's not like she just allowed her son to get, you know, just live on the streets. Like, he went to go ahead and live with his grandparents. Terry was also known to be unfaithful because while, you know, you have this little seven-year-old who is missing, I would assume that sex is really the last thing that you have in mind so it really made people raise eyebrows when they find out that terry was sending nude photos to her lover but again this is after kyron disappeared but according to terry she did it as retribution because she claims that kane was also being unfaithful after kyron disappeared but i did find it to be true that kane was also unfaithful to Terry before Kyron's disappearance, but was also unfaithful to Desiree when he was married to her. There are also claims that Desiree and Kane made that she was sending hateful emails to her friends about how much she hated Kyron. But according to Terry, like, that is absolutely not true. So sadly, like, this case is just filled with he said, she said, and I just could not find, like, any sort of physical evidence updates. Because all I know is that the family fears that Kyron may not be with us. But they are hopeful that he will be found again. So if you are watching this and you have any information at all, please be a snitch. Call 911 or call 503-823-3333. If Kyron is still alive today, then he would be turning 21 later this year. Of course, Kyron's loved ones miss him dearly. A sister has grown up most of her life not even remembering her older brother. His parents have lost moments with their son for over a decade and spent all of those years doing their best to search for him and try to figure out what could have happened to him. My prayer is that God would comfort Kyron's loved ones and that he would provide them with the answers that they have been searching for. The God that I serve, the God of the Bible, is an all-seeing God. He knows exactly where Kyron is and knows exactly what happened to him that day. Again, if you have any information at all, I do have the numbers that you can call in the description box and there is a $50,000 reward. I thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on this video at all, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you would like to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there is a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for next True Crime Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.